From the Eagle to the People, you know what time it is. I got the special mic. That means story time. You know what that means? That means I got to tell you a story and you get to decide and let me know in the comments below whether or not you think it's funny. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. Oh, wait, what's that? That is the newest light box up for sale. This is the Asian Dragon Yin and Yang Shadow Box. It's on eBay. You can go check that out. at be in the link in the description. So, now... As I'm tripping over my chair. Yeah, great intro, right? On that note, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of the story. And we're going to be talking about me today because of the simple fact that this happens to me. So, I go to the VA. Everybody should know that I'm a disabled vet. It happens. Uh, not a big deal, right? Okay, fair enough. But it does mean that sometimes things happen and I get a little weird. <laughs> so, on that note... We're going to go into me telling you about my newest problems, which is all in here. It's my stomach issues. So I go to the VA because it's free. Straight up, that's that's why I go there, because it's free health care. I don't have to pay for anything. I get to see a doctor. They get to diagnose me and tell me what's wrong with me, which is kind of important. Taking care of yourself should be number one. However, I will wait until I'm literally missing both legs and an amputee before I go in because I hate going to the doctor. Anyway, this one is because of my bladder issues, right? Okay, so I have bladder issues. If you didn't know, I do. It happens. I, did. I damage the sciatic nerve in my back, which causes me to, like, randomly lose feeling. There you go. So, I've been using the bathroom a lot. Now, I don't know about you, but I know darn well that when I'm in the bathroom, that's when my best ideas come up. I'm like, hey, you know, maybe I should bring comedy to the channel. Hmm. That'll be a good one, because I forgot my phone, so now I'm sitting here reading the back of the freeze can. Did you know the aerosol sprays at six miles an hour? I didn't know that. This is weird. Why do they have product? Okay, whatever. Anyway, so I'm sitting in the bathroom multiple times a day because I've got stomach issues. Now, what I'm getting is massive cramping, which is fine. I can deal with that. The explosive bitteria that we keep regarding to on these, which seems to be a running theme, so I guess that's where we're going. But, got that going, and on top of that, now I'm getting extreme bouts of nausea. That is the problem. That right there is the top list of the problem. I can deal with the other two because they make Imodium tablets. Now, if you don't know what an Imodium tablet is, you take that thing, it stops you up. There's, It's like just putting a cheese cork up there and going... You ain't going for a week. I can deal with that. Whatever. Cramping, okay, that's just another level of pain. Whatever, get over it. It moves on. We grow through pain. Anyway, nausea is a door stopper for me. The moment this starts wanting to go, bleh, that's a problem because that means I'm going to bed. And if I'm going to bed, I'm not working. And that's not cool by me. I don't like doing that at all. So what I'm going to be doing is going over what happened. Now, in order to stop the nausea, we got to get to the issue of what's going on with the stomach. Now that, just so you know, if you are a medical specialist, you should know. The stomach is an indicator of a problem, but it's not a good indicator of any problem because it could be everything from when you stubbed your toe when you were three to a headache. Seriously, it's not a good indicator. The stomach gets upset very easily. With me having prior issues to my back, it's expected to be upset, but it doesn't help when... It's got issues going on, and there's a back problem that had issues that caused a different problem, but now that's on top of it. When that goes on, they usually try to tack it to my back, which this one is not, and I know that for a fact because I got the nausea going with it. However, it is still a really bad indicator, which means you've got to go through a long process. So let me explain this. I'm going to tell you fully about my experience trying to see my doctor who, by the way, took me forever to find out and find this doctor that I liked because I don't get along with doctors. It's the thing. Hey, look, I don't go until I'm dying. There's a reason. <laughs> doctors look at me and they go, oh, you're young. You'll heal. Drink water. My spleen's hanging out of my back end. No, it's fine. It's supposed to be that way. You're, you're young. You'll heal. Okay, I don't like you. <laughs> So, 
Anyway, my experience of going to the VA is always fun. Now, when you're exceptionally upset in the stomach area, a long drive is the last thing you want to do. Especially when you've got explosive booterea going on. That's not fun. And there's a problem with me. Now, I'm not a germaphobe, but I do have an issue with public bathrooms. Okay, I don't care what you say. Public bathrooms are not cool to me. I don't like them. They're uncomfortable. They are seriously uncleanly. And I don't know how many booties have touched that toilet seat before my booty's about to touch it either. Not happening. I will not, absolutely will not, use a public restroom to go number two. Number one's one thing. I got I got the lucky part. I'm a male. I get to stand there. Hey, look, I can aim. Ha ha, I can spell my name. What's up? E a G oh, I ran out. Okay. So I'm a male. Going number one is easy. There is another problem that I will tell you about in that because there's an experience with that. However, the whole point of this is that I will not go number two in a public bathroom. It will not happen. There is a story behind that for a later date. However, there's a problem between this and this and this where this goes, no, we're not doing that publicly. I think that's fair. I think we all deserve to have our one thing. I have multiple things, but I do. Uh, that That's my one thing that I won't do in public. So, I get in the van. Yes, I have the minivan. It's freaking awesome. If you don't like minivans, you should try driving one. The captain seats are really, really nice if you got back problems. I'm telling you right now. And the thing drives like a butter. Just <laughs> done. Ding. Welcome to my minivan. And then you got a button right there. You push it and the door goes. Psh! Welcome to the most comfortable ride you'll ever take. And then you go, bing, and it goes, Shoo! closing free Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay, so, yes, I have a minivan. I love my minivan. I'm, I'm not even kidding you. I'm a minivan van person. I like trucks, but I'm more of a minivan person. It's got a cover on the top. It's a work vehicle. It works. So, with that being the case, I get in my minivan. We go up to the VA. Now, the parking in the VA is ridiculous. And I mean that seriously. I don't know if you've ever been in an airport, but if you've been in an airport, then you should probably know that there's a parking deck. We have that here at the VA, but the one that I go to is not the closest one. I won't go to the closest one because it's in the city of Detroit. And I'm sorry, you can go to the one in Detroit. I'm going to the one that's hidden because I like it better. And that's the key. I will go where I enjoy going or makes it less painful to go to. So I drive an hour and a half out of the way to go to my VA. I'm okay with that. But I usually take a family member with me because I don't like driving. So <laughs> sucks for that family member, right? Ah, look at me issues. <laughs> yep. So. The other funny part is when you go to the VA and you look like this and your mother, who you usually take with you because she drives in, it's her minivan, and I love it. It's a shared vehicle between us, but it's her minivan, and I don't mind that she drives because she like she's better on the freeway than I am, that's for sure. I'm an angry driver. Just straight up, I'm an angry driver. I don't like driving with other people. I don't like you close to me. I will push the gas to get away from you. Just saying. So, you show up to a VA with me and my mother. My mother has... Four different colors in her hair. It looks awesome. It's like a mermaid hair. I have red rooster hair. Like straight up. Yeah, I've got that. And then I've got this big nose to go with it. I just look weird. Okay, so now I go into a VA and people are like, you're not a vet. Buddy, I got my card. I am a vet. I promise. But because I keep my hair like this, people judge that right off the bat. Plus the VA I go to has a bunch of incredibly elder people so they're kind of stuck in their time where the colored hair thing still hasn't caught on and it's like dude new generation I'm not in active anymore I don't have a code of conduct I need to follow my hair is my hair. Done. So we get in the minivan we go to the VA now everybody at the VA I already mentioned is elder I'm sorry, if you are elder and you are above the age of 80, you should be taking another driver's test to make sure that you are even capable of driving because most of you are not. I'm telling you right now, you can't park, number one. Number two, you don't look. 
and I don't care if you do, that's cool, that's on you. But the ones that I work around and I have to drive around and I have to go through a parking structure with, they don't look. They don't care. Either that or they just don't know. I don't know any of the above, but you should not be driving. End of story. You really shouldn't. And the other fun part is, if you've been to a parking structure garage, you know darn well that the parking spots are like, Nyeh! you pull your little mini coupe in, you're not fitting another mini coupe next to it. Straight up, it's so small. So for us, because we have a big vehicle, we have to go to the third level, which has the non-compact parking, because compact parking is eco-friendly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, we go there. You know what happens when we go there? Every vet has a thing, and I'll tell you this right now. Any male vet that I know owns a pickup truck. Not just any pickup truck. Here in Michigan, they don't just own a pickup truck. They own a Ford F-150, guaranteed to be a Ford F-150, usually silver or black, or sometimes blue. Blue seems to be a new one that's popping up, but still silver or black or blue. There you go. And all of them have lift kits with extra tires, like extra oversized tires. Here's the problem with a truck that big. These people are elders. They don't want to walk from the third floor. So what they do is they park their oversized super duty dual exhaust thrust pipe tubing truck in a compact. And then they expect that they're going to be able to back out. Now I'm telling you, there's not enough room between the mini coupes on both sides to take two vehicles through. You got to play this game where you're like, Ooh, Bobby Weave, Bobby Weave, okay, uh, go, it's foul, go, okay, go, 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 we found one. Oh man, there's another one coming. God. All right, get out in direct traffic. That's how we got to do it now, ladies and gentlemen. We got to get out. You go through this parking garage and that's what they've already have. Now we're taking a super duty and cutting that space down because I can't walk from the third floor. Annoying. Absolutely annoying. It's like a weird pet peeve thing. I don't care. I go to the third floor because yeah, I don't like walking it, but my vehicle isn't going to get smashed on the second and first floor. So there you go. This VA is insanely clean, insanely nice, and I like it. They keep everything good. I've got no problems with it at all. The parking is a little meh. And the funny part is, if you're on the first floor and you try and park in this one spot, it's going to kick you right back out. It's literally loop and out. And a lot of people do this loop because it's the first time in there, and it's the funniest thing to watch. You can literally sit there all day and just get reality TV of people going, oh, oh. Oh, God, no! Because they'll pull around, and then it kicks them back out, and they got to go down the street and turn around and come back in, which is fun. But VA is an interesting place, and they're doing renovations, so that's cool. I've got an upset stomach. I don't like driving on an upset stomach because I already have motion sickness issues. So you've got nausea on top of motion sickness, and then you're going to add a speed mountain. And I'm not talking like... The speed mountain because I'm making it sound like it's bigger than it actually is. No, this is a mountain. For a vehicle, this is a mountain. If you have an off-road truck, by all means, it's a speed bump. If you got a minivan, it's not so much a speed bump anymore as much as it is a bumper stealer. This stupid thing they added in before used to be this big. That's what I call a speed bump. It's enough to slow you down and make you realize you've got to stay at 15 miles an hour. The one at the VA they installed... It's this freaking big. I drive my minivan up and my front bumper goes. <laughs> it's horrible. I hate doing it. I'd rather park down the street at the Michigan State University than go that way. Anyway, we go in there and we got to hit these speed bumps. I was not smart. Mm -mm. This eagle was not smart. Mm -mm. No, because Eagle didn't know they put in speed mountains. Literally, I could have laid on the ground and been less of a speed bump than those things were. And we got to drive over them. And I've got motion sickness and nausea. I didn't bring a bag. Guess what that means? Your brand new renovated parking structure 
is now blessed by the Eagle Upchuck. Because I'm not ruining my van. Mm -mm. Roll down the window, stick your head out, and go, okay, go for the bump. So that's what we ended up doing for three floors. Ladies and gentlemen, every bump. <laughs> There's a nice trail. I'll tell you what, though, it was the easiest time we ever had getting to the third floor because these people would move their cars out of fear of me actually hitting them. So that was cool. I was good with that. <laughs> anyway, I get into the V8. Now, I don't know if you know what it's called. It's called white coat syndrome. And if you have white coat syndrome, typically it can go one or two ways. But this was recently explained to me by a medical professional. It's when you walk into the doctor's office feeling like garbage, but the moment you walk through the door, you're fine. It's the body's reaction to say no. I have that issue. And the other flip side of it is people with the white cone syndrome will have incredibly high blood pressure. I run at low blood pressure, like low blood pressure. It's just a thing. It's always been in my family. It's how it works. My blood pressure is low. By the time I go through those doors, I usually feel fine and have an average blood pressure. <laughs> this time, however, I was laughing with my mother because that's where we go. Because I was telling her, I'm like, I feel like garbage. I'm throwing up the entire way getting up to this, this parking spot. I'm going to get through those doors and feel perfectly fine. I can almost guarantee it because it happens every time. And she goes, well, yeah, but uh, it just explained the issues. Fair enough. Well, the VA was kind enough to run a fundraiser that day, which made sure that I didn't feel better that day. So in, in retrospect, it helped me out, but it was a horrible experience. And then they goofed up somewhere in my scheduling, so they double booked my appointment. So the dude who came after me got the first or got to see the doctor first, which I don't understand that either. I was there first, but that's beside the point. They ran a fundraiser selling oatmeal raisin cookies, homemade. I'm a sucker for an oatmeal raisin cookie. Okay, I'm sorry. I love them. They're delicious. They're like, mmm, give me the cookie. Ah! I love cookies, okay? Oatmeal raisin, in my brain, it says healthy plus healthy equals healthy. And I can eat a ton of those. So I'm good with that. <laughs> it's, I know it's not healthy, but in my mind, it says that, okay? So we go into this place, I start feeling better by the time I get to the door. I'm like, see, look, I'm starting to feel better. And then I get hit with that smell. Now, I don't know about you. Let me give you a real close look up. This nose is a radar. Absolutely a radar. It means it will pick up your scent from 15 miles away. Let me give you another good look at this nose. Granted, it's got a hook because I broke it a couple times, but that's how it is. My mother has the same nose. In fact, I think mine's a little bit bigger, but it's hers picks up more than what mine does. So if I'm picking up a smell, I can guarantee she can smell it. Straight up, that's the way it is. So I'm like, okay, cool. I walk through the door, and I don't know what kind of raisin, raisin, oatmeal raisin cookies they were selling or baking, but it smelled worse than a dirty gin bag. It was the courtesy sniff from God. It was terrible. I walk through the door starting to feel better and get hit by dirty sock raisin oatmeal gin bag cookies from... Bleh. And almost went. <clears throat> so now I'm walking through this, the place trying not to be rude, but I'm going like this. Hi. No, I'm, I'm just here to check in for my appointment. Thanks. Why is your shirt up? Because something smells funny and I think I've got a cold and I don't want to get you sick. <laughs> Pretty much how that was rolling. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I'll deal with that. Whatever. So now I've got my shirt up, which is kind of helping. It's bringing it down to like a, a, a dealable level, but my stomach's still going, buddy, you're not going to make it. Now, any other time, we're going back to that double booked issue. I would be fine with you taking the guy after me because I'm already driving well out of my way to make sure that I'm getting there, right? I'm there. I'm dedicated. I'm going to see what I came to see, which means my doctor's going to see me. 
Now, if you walk into the VA and you're a vet, they're going to put you in a little cubicle area, which is your waiting area, which then you go into the giant room, the biggest room in the hospital that has one scale. Why? I guess a whale has to be weighed once in a while. I don't know. But that's what ends up happening. And then you get put back in the cubicle and then you get to go see, get to go see your doctor. Okay. There's a couple of things about me you need to know when this happens. I was sitting there 15 minutes early to my appointment, as always. I'm always early because that's what they ask you to do in case there's paperwork. Well, blah, 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 whatever. This dude showed up at 11 a.m. where his appointment was supposed to be. So at 1100, he's there. I was there at 1045. Which means I should have gone first. And typically, I would be fine with you going first. But now, I am being accosted by God only knows what kind of poison cookies are down the, down the aisle. I want out of this spot. In my little area, I have five seats. There are five empty seats next to me. Granted, you sit seat to seat to seat. You're sitting literally shoulder to shoulder to shoulder to shoulder to shoulder with somebody. That's fine. There's five empty ones. Don't be the dude who's like, hey, checkmate. What's up? I'm literally in your bubble. That, that drives me crazy. Now, the guy who came in has cookies. I'm already trying not to barf. He's got cookies that make me want to barf because they smell worse than a dirty gym bag. I don't know if you've been to a dirty gym bag, but if you go to the dirty gym bag club and you smell every bag in there, it probably smelled better than what that cookie smelled like. It was disgusting. And now you're getting both of my pet peeves, my biggest no-nos in one shot. Now you've done the checkmate move and sat next to me. Now you're touching my shoulder. Problem. Problem number one, do not come in my personal space. I do not like it. I do not want anybody near me. I am like an angry chihuahua. It just happens. Go away. Do not be in my personal bubble. Please, dear God, don't do it. It's just respectful to me to not be in my personal bubble. I don't want to be that close to anything. So, this dude sits here. Now you're in my thing. And I can tell you that I don't know where it comes from, but I know who else has the same issue as me because she does it to me. I will walk in the house at the end of the day and be like, What's up, Mom? Oh. And she'll she'll put her hand out on my face and go, Too close. Back up. And I'll go to back up and I'm like, Hey, how was your day? And no, you don't talk until you back up. And you get to that, Okay, now you can talk because you're out of my bubble. I'm like that. Okay? I really am. The other thing. Do not... Come near me and smack your food in my ear. That is the absolute, oh my lord, absolute, oh my freaking lord. No, just don't do it. Please, dear God, don't do it. It's actually a medical condition. I have it. I forgot what it's called. Don't do it. It's worse than nails on a chalkboard. It literally makes me want to go jump off a cliff and die. Okay? Those are my two pet peeves. You have the dirty gym bag cookie. You are in my personal space and now you are smacking in my ear. The problem with the older gentleman is most older vets want to talk. I'm not a talker at the VA. I'm like this all the time. I'm just going to warn you right now. There's a 100% eagle or there's a just cranky eagle. There's no in between. It doesn't happen. It's just there. I am like this all the time. What you see is what you get. I'm actually like this in real life. Ask my mother. Ask my friends. I act like this. So. When I'm in the VA, you get Cranky Eagle because he doesn't want to deal with these people. I don't mind if you talk to me and tell me your stories. It's fine. I get it. Everybody wants to do that. I don't want to share my stories. I don't live in my past. I'm here because I have a problem. My past is my past. It doesn't make me who I am in my future. Guess what? Greatness is one small step done right every single day. And if you live in the past, you are not making the right step forward. So therefore, I don't live that way. That's how I am. But. I go to the VA because I need to freaking get my medical stuff taken care of, right? This guy wants to talk. There's a rule here. Who broke the rule? 
old people, not to be rude to you guys, you have a habit. I will not shake your hand. Absolutely will not shake your hand unless I guarantee no that I'm about to leave right after. And the only reason I won't do this is because you guys are smart. And I say this in full awareness that you guys really probably are geniuses. Because you know us younger generation don't want to listen to what you got to say. We think we know it all. I'm just saying that to be honest. Let's be real here. We think we know everything. Whatever you have to say is just a nuisance at that point. So what you guys have done is cleverly disguise the handshake. Okay. If you go to the bathroom and you shake more than three times, you're having a good time, right? That, that's the rule. So we don't shake more than three times. You don't shake somebody's hand for more than five seconds. That's, that's the other rule. You shake somebody's hand for more than five seconds, you're playing with it. That's a problem. Older gentlemen at the VA will be like, hey, how you doing? And once they get you here, you're stuck. Because they grab your hand and then the other hand comes up and goes, ha, ah, I got you. Now you're going to listen to my story. And they'll shake your hand. And typically a handshake is, hi, how are you? How it's So on and so forth. You know, walk up. Hey, my name's Eagle. How are you? Done. That's a handshake. That's a typical handshake. Elder. Hi, my name's Frank. Let me tell you my story. And now you're stuck. That's why I will not shake your hand. This guy tried that on me. Didn't work. He did, however, grab my shoulder anyway because he thought it was going to work. And then he goes, how you doing today? And he wasn't being mean. I'm not giving him any problems. He just doesn't know my issues. He doesn't know what's going on. So in all fairness, this is just me being me. He was not even mean. He was actually pleasantly polite. But the side, the side effect of the gym bag cookie was killing me. So I looked at him and I'm sitting in the chair like this. And he goes, you all right? And I was like, yeah, I'm just sick and I don't want to get you sick. So if you don't mind, could you move over and see... And he goes, oh, I don't mind getting sick. And I was like, ah. So you try to play it off nice. Now I'm sitting there going, now I got to move. Because I made the move. I didn't tell you to move. Now I have to move. I got to give up my seat. That's fine. Fine. I'll move. I go to move. And the guy goes, you want a cookie? And sticks it in my nose. You don't know my issues, buddy. But what you do know is that I made you move. Because of the simple fact that when you stuck that cookie in my face, I went <laughs> and caught my mouth. And he went, oh. And I looked at him and went, I don't feel good. I apologize. Could I'm going to move now. And he goes, well, they got cookies right down there. And he sticks it in my face again. I was like, Argh. and of course, because now I'm accosted by the smell. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, if there's a God, if there's anything up there, please just call his name or my name and get me away from him. I got so lucky because that prayer got answered. I'm telling you right now, I got called into the back and I was like, oh, thank God I'm going to the whale room. Oh, Lord. So I come over and now I'm sitting there. This is the moral of it. I come back out from being weighed and having my blood pressure taken because that's what they do. And then they ask you how your day is. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I feel like I got rolled down a hill full of crap. How's your day? I go back up. This dude's got my mom. <laughs> and he's got my mom. Like, got her. And she's got this look like, I'm going to murder your face hole. And he's not being mean. He's just not that bright to understand a signal that says, please back up. So, that dude is now with my mom. Who has this look like she's going to murder him. And it's literally because he's in her bubble. It's not the cookie. She can deal with the smell of the cookie, which is fine because she doesn't have the upset stomach or anything going on. She can deal with that. She cannot deal with people in her personal space, just like I cannot deal with people in my personal space. It's horrible. Please don't. So, yes, she's sitting there. And she looks at me with the look of, if you don't make this stop... You're going to be wearing your shoes on your head because they're going to go up your rear end. And I was like, I have a plan. Okay, 
Number one, when I have a plan, that's a bad idea. Number two, if I say I have a plan, you should probably ask me what that plan is before I go and do that plan. But in this scenario, this is an emergency case, so I have a plan. My plan is to grab the nurse by the back of her collar as she's trying to walk away from me. And I yanked her over and I was like, I need your help. And she looks at me like it's a medical concern. And I was like, I need you to make me vomit. And she goes, what? I'm like, I need you to make me sick. And she goes, well, how do I do that? I was like, you push on my stomach and my back at the same time. And she goes, well, how, why? And I was like, because I'm going to walk over there and I'm going to make this guy leave my mom alone. And she goes, you're sure this will work? I'm like, I guarantee my stomach is so jacked up that if you push in this spot, in this spot, and make it look like you're trying to grab me, because I don't want to walk over and just be like, hey, and, and do it on purpose. I wanted to look like she was trying to get my attention so that way she could remind me of something, right? But I thought this out. Ah, look, I'm smart. And she agreed. She agreed. That, that was the problem right there. You went along with the eagle plan, ladies and gentlemen. That's a problem. That is a serious problem. Because you trusted me. Now, in, in all reality, I have made some really clever decisions. This was not one of them, but it did work. I walk over and I was like, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to come up and say, hey, we forgot, and just grab right there. And she goes, okay, cool, I can do that, no problem, whatever. And this lady's pretty nice. I've met her a few times. We, we get along and well, which is probably why she agreed to this. And it was funny because I don't think she believed that I actually would. <laughs> So I walked over and I made sure that I wasn't going to hit him, but I was going to get a close enough to where he saw it. And that was my key point here. I wanted him to see it because now you've been in my personal space. You accosted me with a cookie and now you've got my mother. And nobody messes with my mama. That's, that's the number one rule. I am a mama's boy. I don't give a crap what you think. Nobody messes with my mama. You can mess with me. Don't touch my mama. Don't deal with mom. Mm -mm. No, you, you stay away from my mom. You talking to you don't don't you mess with my mama <laughs> so i walk over right and this guy goes oh you're back and he's still talking to my mom and he goes he won't let her go and he goes i was just talking to and the lady comes up and goes oh i'm sorry i forgot and as she did that she grabbed my stomach and my lower back this dude made the mistake of putting the cookie back in my face you sure you don't want any of the... <laughs> I ruined your cookie. That dude dropped that cookie so freaking quick, it was like a mine in his hand. He was holding an M80 grenade. I'm telling you right now, that dude was holding a grenade. He threw it like it was nobody's business. Blah! And ran. And I was like, and that's how we solved the issue. And the lady goes, I cannot believe that you just did that. And I was like, yep. Now, if you bring me a mop bucket, I'll clean up my own mess. Priceless moments right there, ladies and gentlemen. This is how I deal with things. <laughs> I use my body and its, its disadvantages to my advantage. I hope you can do that with yours. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this has been another Eagle story time for you. If you guys like these episodes, go ahead and smack the crap out of the like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because, you know, you want to make sure that you catch every video that comes up. Turn on the notifications so it lets you know that I uploaded. And I will see all of you and your beautiful faces in the next story. Bye-bye!